Well, it was looking good yesterday evening. There was plenty of fish down this end of the lake. I think really this is where I should have spent all of the nights this week. You know, it's like time's running out so fast. But I caught another one, early hours of the morning, on exactly the same spot where I've had the last two bites as well. And it's not the biggest one, but it's definitely the prettiest one. It's a mirror of 23 pound, three ounces. It's funny, I saw this one in the photo album when Dave was showing me it, and I thought it was one of the crackers, one of the ones I'd like to catch. So I'm well placed. Hold on. Look at that for a lovely cart. Got this lively one. Gonna let me pick you up. There you go, how's that? They really are some nice looking fish in this lake. Half a dozen scaly fish like this. Lovely floppy tail on him. A bit like Black Eyes Tail, smaller one. Spin around. Cool, cool, isn't it? There we go. Lovely car. All right, I think we'll get her back. She was keen to get back. Well pleased with that. You know what? All week the weather's been really, really hot and all of us on both lakes here, there's some lads fishing on the day ticket one as well, doing the other DVD. We've all been waiting for a break in the weather. You know, it was real hot, so we wanted some sort of thunderstorm, bit of rain, and, and we were hoping that if that happened, it'd really switch the fish on. 
Now the fish really did respond well to that change in the weather conditions. They started fizzing, there was fish head and shouldering. Like I say, it was mainly the smaller fish, which has been the case up this end of the lake. But out the corner of my eye, just up here to the left, I caught sight of a big one lop over. And it was wide, really wide across the head. If it wasn't the big one, then it was the second biggest fish. So it was either black eye or one that they call the red fish. Now, all the while that that, that was just the one there that showed in the corner, and quickly I reeled in a rod and put it there. But all the while that was going on, there was an awful lot more happening out in the open water. Like there was, whenever the lake calmed off, you'd see half a dozen different sets of bubbles out there. So I still had one rod at this point, fishing right across to the far bank. And I, and I walked around there a couple of times, looked. It's only, I had my bait position probably four foot out from the bank and there was no activity over here at all. So in the finish, I decided to reel that rod in as well and also fish that to where the fish were bubbling. And you can guess what happened, probably within an hour of me doing that, the lake went totally dead. I took a stroll around to the other side and they were troughing their reds off on top of both of the rod, both of the spots that I had been fishing across on that far bank. One in particular, there's a stump there and, and and that one, well, as I approached the spot, I could see the waves ebbing out from the edge, you know, and the tail patterns. So uh, I think they're pretty clever fish. Anyway, I've, I've already, I've, I've changed all the rods around again. I've even changed the angles of the line and I've now got two baits again fished over on that far bank. Now, ideally, I'd like to be landing within about so far of the bank, no more than a metre off the bank, because that's where the fish patrolling really, really tight. Now, obviously I can cast that, but it's going to take me quite a few attempts to get it right. And not only that, there's a lot of disturbance as well. So what I'm doing, I cast that a little bit further and cast it and land it on the bank. Occasionally it goes really far and goes up in the trees. I've had all sorts of nightmares. But the idea is to get that line across onto the far bank. Now something else, it, it happened quite by chance, but on one of my casts, the lead hit the, hit the bank right at water level, if you like. And when I went round there, the lead was embedded right underneath the bank. So I rolled my sleeve up, put my arm under the bank and couldn't believe how far undercut it was. It was obvious the fish had been digging right underneath the bank. Now it was all clay lined and to get that lead out, literally I had to dig and dig and dig and eventually found the swivel and pulled the leg out, lead out and it was covered in clay. Now I, I know that carp like clay and especially you can see by the way they dug this bank out, they really liked it over there. So what I'd done, I got a clod of this clay and moulded it all round the lead. It was dripping with clay, all slimy and then I lowered it onto the spot. So something a little bit different, you know, and, and all three of my bites have come off of that same spot doing exactly that. So I've now done it with both, you know, two, both rods across there, I've got the old clay clod hanging on the lead. It's interesting with this clay, because uh, it's, it's something I was talking to my friend about, Dave, only a couple of weeks ago. Now, it, it, he, he'd done a little bit of research and looked it up on the internet, it was a koi website. And basically he found that, I mean, this one koi place, they actually sell clay and people put it in their ponds. And apparently they actually absorb the minerals and salts for, into their skin. You know, so sometimes when you see carp on, a, especially on the big gravel pits and where there's a lot more clay present, you see them, they're covered in clay, all up their flanks. I've seen them with clods of it all over their head, hardly look, you know, little beady eye looking through it, you know, <laughs> unbelievable. Now, they're like pigs really, you know, they like to roll in it, you know, and they like covering themselves in it. But I think there's a little bit more to it, you know, they, they absorb it through their skin, those minerals and stuff. So and at this time of the year, this is when they really need to build up their immune system. So maybe there's a little bit more to it than we think. But, you know, like I say, they're, they are like pigs as well, and they like rolling in mud and anything like that. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. I think sometimes it's like they're putting on their war paint you know, and, and they're showing off to each other. I've got more clay on me than you have, you know what I mean? But whatever, it's something to work, it's worth thinking about.